Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video, we're going to be focusing on a specific talisman. Of course, we're going to be making powerful builds for each one of these as well, but this is the top 15 chargeable spells and skills in Elden Ring. And at number 15, we're going to start with Frenzied Burst and the Flame of Frenzy. Both these are chargeable. They're good for PvE. They're not amazing or super overpowered as some of the higher ones on this list, but they are chargeable and they can do a lot of fire damage. Not only that, they're really fun to use. I recommend, by the way, if you're a Faith Builder at 150, to offhand the Frenzied Seal for the boost and then use a higher Faith Scaling Seal like the Erdtree Seal to maximize your damage. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Erdtree Seal plus 10. We're using the Frenzied Flame Seal in the offhand for the boost. We have the Black Dumpling on. We have 51 Poise. Godfrey Icon, of course. Fire Scorpion Charm. Ritual Shorts Talisman. Flux Canvas Talisman. Fire Tier. Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. By the way, if you noticed, I slowed down my talking a little bit for this one. I'm hoping I can get some more information out this way without talking super fast. Now, we hit 80 Faith. We're getting a lot of damage. We're using Golden Vow, Hallow Shabiri, Frenzied Burst, and the Flame of Frenzy, and we have 60 Vigor. And next one on this list at number 14 is Black Flame. Completely chargeable and doing both fire and percentage damage. This is a really good addition to a lot of builds and by itself can do a lot of damage. By the way, if you haven't seen my video on how to craft a powerful faith build yet, definitely check that one out. I'll leave that one in the description too. That's a really good video on how to make faith builds. We're using the God Slayer seal to boost this by 10% and another 20% from the Jellyfish shield. And of course, we use Golden Val as our aura buff, and then we used Hala Shabriri as our body buff, so we can stack a body and aura buff together, which will give us an additional around 40% more damage. Between that, the Jellyfish shield, and the seal, that's around 70% more damage. By the way, I would tie Scouring Black Flame with this too. That's another really good one. I like the simple Black Flame Fireball because it has a lot of range, it's chargeable, and it's just really convenient to use when you're running a Faith build. You can add it to addition with a ton of different builds, and it's just so convenient doing that massive fire and percentage damage from a decent range. I would even go as far as to say that Black Flame is probably a favorite incantation for me. I add it to a lot of builds, and it mixes in very well with different fire builds. You can run the Blasphemous Blade with the God Slayer Seal and get a lot of damage. For this build, we have the God Slayer Seal plus 25, Jellyfish Shield. We have 51 boys. We're actually at 55. We have the Godfrey Icon, of course, Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Flox Canvas Talisman, Flame Tier, Fire Tier, I call it, Fate Tier. Let's jump into stats. Okay, so for stats, we have 60 Vigor again, 80 Faith. We're a Faith build, so we're trying to get that hard cap, that what I call hard cap at 80, because between 80 and 99 isn't much. And then we're using Golden Vow, Halashabiri, and Black Flame. Next one up here at number 13 is another favorite, and that is Lightning Spear. Lightning Spear is a really cool incantation that has a lot of range. It's completely chargeable and does pure lightning damage. Now, unlike other dragons, the Magma Worm's resistances are actually decent. He has around 40% for most elemental damage types. That being said, you're able to hit him in the head for extra damage. So, of course, with Lightning Spear and given the range, I'm able to hit him in the head several times. This is definitely a fun one, too. If you never ran a pure Lightning Spear build or a build around the Lightning Incantations, definitely do it. It's really enjoyable. Honestly, Faith builds as a whole have a lot of versatility and a lot of fun. Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, by the way, has been patched out of the Godfrey Icon, but Lightning Spear is very chargeable. For my own testing, the Godfrey Icon does not do much for Agent Dragon Lightning Strike anymore. Some people are still saying that it works. Others will tell you that it doesn't work. Technically speaking, via the patch notes, I think in 1.07 or 1.08, it was patched out and no longer is chargeable with the Godfrey Icon. And we're going to jump into equipment for this one. Of course, we have the Gravel Stone Seal to boost Lightning Spear. We have the Jellyfish Shield. We have the same armor set on here. We have the Godfrey Icon, of course. Lightning Scorpion Charm. Ritual Swords Talisman. Flox Canvas Talisman, Lightning Tier, Fate Tier, let's jump into stats. Feels kind of weird for me reading these slowly because naturally I'm a fast talker, but I'm trying to make sure that this is more helpful. I know I've been going through these fast. We have 60 Vigor, 80 Faith, Golden Vow, Hal Shapiri, and Lightning Spear for this one. And next up at number 12, we have Stars of Ruin. This is completely chargeable and a powerful spell. However, this used to be better at launch. It was nerfed. The tracking was nerfed some on it. That being said, it's still quite good. Yeah, just because it had the nerf doesn't mean it's a bad spell. It's just not as overpowered as it was at launch. At launch, it was one of the best things that a mage could use, but now because the tracking has been nerfed some, it's just powerful. I wouldn't call it overpowered, but it's very good for utility and could work for a lot of bosses. 
If you're just coming back and you're catching up on Elden Ring ahead of DLC, I believe it was just the tracking that was nerfed. I don't think the damage itself was nerfed at all, so it was just the tracking that was nerfed some. It could still be a very powerful spell, especially when charged. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have Lucette's Staff for the good scaling. We have the Jellyfish Shield. Any seal for buffs, it doesn't really matter. We did hit 51 poise, Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Virtual Swords Talisman, Graven Mass Talisman. Then we have the Magic Tier. Faith tier for buffs. Let's jump into stats. And for stats for this one, because we're a mage, it's going to look a lot different. We have 70 intelligence, 33 faith with the faith tier, so we can do buffs like Golden Val and Hallow Shabiri. We have 50 vigor for a lot of the mage stuff, 22 mine, 18 endurance, and we're using Terra Magica as well, and also charging Stars of Ruin. At number 11, we have Glintstone Chris, a really powerful dagger that has essentially Comet on it that has a much shorter range, but even with the shorter range, it could do a ton of magic damage, and of course, it's chargeable too. By the way, all footage for this video is on New Game Plus 7 as always. I think we're around Journey 33 currently, so everything has the maximum amount of HP. I say this in my videos a lot, but the Fire Giant has a crazy amount of HP at 64,000, so there's a lot to get through here. What's your favorite dagger in Elden Ring, by the way? I'm curious as to doing the dagger build here for Glintstone Chris. What's your personal favorite dagger? And do you want to see a build video for all the daggers in the game? Maybe we can make a build for every dagger in Elden Ring. That would be something fun to do. Definitely comment below if you want to see that and comment your favorite dagger. Yeah, I know that daggers are a less used class, but you can see here with Glintstone Chris, we're getting a ton of magic damage from a mid-range. By the way, you could boost this with the Spellblade set too, I just wanted a little bit better armor to take the Fire Giant on here, and it would give you 8% more damage in total. The Spellblade set is not the best looking set in Elden Ring though, so a lot of people have an issue with that, and it also offers minimal protection. If you're a melee builder using a weapon like this at a mid-range, it's a little bit better because it has good elemental resistances, but it has very low physical resistance, being a lightweight mage armor. Being that this is a mid-range version of Comet, you don't have the range that Comet or Night Comet has, which both of them, by the way, have incredible range. It's much shorter here. It's a little bit difficult to hit his weak points in Phase 2. It was much easier to hit his ankle in Phase 1, making the second part of the fight longer. Yeah, that mid-range ability actually has me uh, missing a couple of times, but for an Ash of War, it does a good amount of magic damage. It, By the way, the Ash itself is going to scale primarily with your Intelligence stat. doesn't really matter what's on the weapon, it's going to scale straight from your Intelligence stat. So pump up Intelligence to get a lot of damage out of Glintstone Chris. I ultimately had a lot of fun with this weapon too. This isn't a weapon that's appeared in many of my videos. I think I've only done a build for it one other time, literally just one other time, and I didn't actually have the opportunity to charge it that much. We were able to charge it much more there. It does a lot of magic damage. This is a solid dagger. If you're using it for regular hits on the weapon, you're going to need dexterity too, but if you're just using the ash, you really don't have to worry about anything, as I just mentioned, other than your intelligence stat, which is going to give you a lot of damage on the ash. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have Glintstone Chris, preferably plus 10. Any seal will do. We had any staff for Terra Magica. You can check out the armor set, 51 poise. Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats for this one. And for stats, we have 50 Vigor again on the Mage stuff, 22 Mind. We have 70 Intelligence. We're using Golden Vow, Hala Shabiri, and Terra Magica to buff this. I didn't go for a lot of dexterity because I was mainly using the Ash of War, and 70 Intelligence is going to give us a lot of damage that way. The next one up here is Erdovis' Greatsword, a powerful holy and physical damage weapon that leans much more physical than holy damage. It has a little bit of fate scaling, but primarily you'll be getting an A in your strength stat. I do mess up here, by the way, with the uh, Black Knife Assassin here by posture breaking him, but then over damaging him. He's able to get up, and then he actually gets kind of stuck in a corner for a little bit, and I end up taking more damage than I should have. But overall, you can see the damage that Ordovis' Greatsword is able to do to the Black Knife Assassin. By the way, on a list of fun weapons, this is another one that's absolutely a blast to use. If you've never used Erdovis' Greatsword, I recommend trying out both of the Crucible Knight weapons. They're a ton of fun, and of course they're chargeable, and you can get a lot of posture damage and physical damage out of them. Yeah, definitely take more damage than I should have here at the end, but you can see the Ash, by the way. It's, it's really powerful to use, especially up close. Charge it. So much posture and physical damage out of this weapon. Let's jump into equipment here in a second for this awesome build and setup. I was going to do it a mode apparently, but I did not have the right one equipped. Uh, for this, we have Redovis' Greatsword plus 10. We're using the Ur Tree Seal for good faith scaling. We have the Crucible Tree set on. 
We have the Shard of Alexander, Godfrey Icon, Ritual Swords Talisman, Urtree's Favorite Plus 2, Holy Tear, Faith Tear, and by the way, you could use the uh, Crucible Axe set too, I was just wearing the tree set for both of them. If for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 21 Mind, 25 Endurance, we get to 75 Strength when we're two-handing it, 45 Faith with the Faith Tear. Then for buffing this, we're using Golden Vow, Hallow Shabiri to boost both the physical and holy damage part of the weapon, and then Blessing's Boon for some extra HP. And at number 9, we have Ciliaria's Tree, if that's how you say it. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the pronunciation there, but anyways, this weapon is really powerful for a mid-range weapon, has a ton of physical damage, and it is chargeable as well. Yeah, I watch lore videos and stuff too, of course. It's been a while since I watched anything lore related, but sometimes it's just not the best for the pronunciation. Or I say one thing the wrong way, I don't know if anybody else does this, and then I continue to say it that way, even if I hear it the proper way afterwards. This is another one, by the way, that's physical damage, I mentioned this too, and holy damage, but it's so much more with physical damage. Much like Ordovus' Greatsword, there's a ton of physical damage you're going to do with this weapon. It's a strength and faith weapon, but strength first and foremost. Keep that in mind when you're using this, like Ordovus' Greatsword, that you want to invest in strength to make sure you have probably like a minimum of 60 strength, maybe even higher, and then around like 40 faith or so. You don't have to go too high with your faith stat when you're using one of the two Crucible Knight weapons. Another one definitely to make a fun list too, I recommend trying out the whole Crucible cosplay. Now the incantations aren't amazing, but based on the DLC trailer that we saw, we're going to get a whole bunch of different things, including the wings, and honestly, I can't wait for that. And hilarious thing at the end of this clip, I honestly had such a hard time with this sheep and then finally went up and hit him, but yeah, he was kind of messing up me trying to open up the equipment menu. We're going to jump into equipment now. For equipment, we have Ciliaria's Tree, preferably plus 10. We're using the Urtree Seal. It's just for buffs, though. We have the Crucible Tree set on. Shard of Alexander, Godfrey Icon, Ritual Swords Talisman, Urtree's Favorite plus 2, Holy Tear, Faith Tear. Let's jump into stats. Same as Ordovus' Greatsword. We hit 75 Strength when we're two-handing this. We have 45 Faith with the Faith Tear. We have 60 Vigor, 21 Mind, and 25 Endurance. Then for buffs, we're using Golden Vow, Hallish Rebiri, because it'll boost everything generically by 25%, and then we're using Blessings Boon for some extra HP too, and to fit the Crucible theme. And at number 8, we have my favorite big target destroyer in Shard Spiral for Mages. Now, obviously for Faith builds, you have the Envoys Longhorn and Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, which are going to beat this, but if you're a mage, there's nothing like Shard Spiral to take down big bosses. This is chargeable, and in my opinion, honestly, this is kind of a sleeper spell. Not a lot of people talk about Shard Spiral. It's truly incredible because it pierces through the enemies, the bigger bosses, and continuously does damage as it pierces through them. You can actually destroy Elden Beast fairly easily with Shard Spiral. If you hit him enough right, especially in the front of him where it goes through like the entire animation, each time it generally hits him for around between three and 5,000 damage on each cast. So if you're struggling with the big dragon here, if you're struggling with Elden Beast or any of the bigger targets in the game, it works for most of the dragons too, particularly if you hit them in the head and then it goes through their entire body, it could do insane damage, 5-6,000, it truly is an incredible spell. And this is why I like the Godfrey icon so much too, because so many of the chargeable spells and skills in the game have really high damage caps, and when you hold it back and charge, you're getting additional damage to begin with, and then the Godfrey icon on top of that. And the reason I did this video, actually, is because the Godfrey Icon is my second favorite talisman. My first favorite, favorite talisman is the Shard of Alexander for Weapon Arch, which universally is probably the best talisman in the game. But second to that, for any chargeable spells or skills, you can throw in the Godfrey Icon and get a lot of damage. By the way, for those waiting on the hybrid builds, I'm taking some time on that one to make sure that they come out good because they are really hard to do, and I want to make some different stuff with that one too. So that's going to be the week after this one. Yeah, just a quick update on that one there. The hybrid builds will be the week after this one. Before this video, I probably already posted the top 8 arcane. I guess after that one, it's going to be strength or intelligence. You can also comment which one of those two you want to see next. And lastly, in the comment section, let me know if me talking slower, especially through the equipment stats and all the information stuff to try to make it educational at a slower pace, is something that you're on board with for the future and if it's more helpful that way. Yeah, I tried to change the pace for this one, and I changed the pace in my last crafting video too. For this, we have Lucette Staff plus 10, Jellyfish Shield, any seal for buffs. You don't need the Spellblade set here. We have the Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Graven Mass Talisman, Magic Tear, Faith Tear. Let's jump into stats for this one. 
And for stats, we have 50 Vigor again for most of the mage stuff, 22 Mind, only 18 Endurance, 20 Strength for the Jellyfish Shield, 70 Intelligence, and then we have 33 Faith with the Faith tier. And we're using Golden Vow, Hala Shabiri, Terra Magica, and of course, Shard Spiral. And at number 7, we have one of my favorite incantations in the entire game in Giant's Flame Take the Throwing around giant fireballs is incredibly fun, and of course, it's chargeable too. Yeah, another powerful chargeable option for you. We're going to have Burno Flame shortly on this list too, which is also chargeable. But this one has a decent amount of range. It actually has an area of effect too when it lands. It's really good for mobs, and it does, of course, a ton of fire damage. And you're going to see at the end here what I mean by an area of effect. Now, it doesn't hit Loretta directly here. It actually hits to the side of her. I think it kind of hit like the side of it hit her. But for mobs and stuff, the explosion, it has a good area of effect. It's really good for them. And it's good for bosses even if you hit next to them. You do some damage with this one. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the giant seal, of course, and the jellyfish shield. We hit 55 poise, apparently, but we could definitely hit 51 if we have 55. Godfrey icon, fire scorpion charm, ritual swords talisman, flox canvas talisman. Fire tier, Fate tier, let's jump into stats for this one. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, we have 80 Faith with the Fate tier, we have 22 Mind, 24 Endurance, 20 Strength for the Jellyfish Shield. And then we're using Golden Vow, Howla Shabiri to buff this, and of course we're using Giant's Flame Take D, which is a really fun incantation. I definitely recommend trying this one out, and the Giant Seal boost it pretty well too. Yeah, 20% boost there for Giant's Flame. Now, at number 6, we have Carrion Grandeur, and we end up with kind of a funny clip. I did two buffs in Terra Magica here, and I honestly thought it would have gotten him in one, but it did 7,800 damage, and we did a less charged second one. In all seriousness, how is that a boss? Like, how is he a boss? I can't even remember the last time Gideon actually killed me in Elden Ring. It's been so long since he killed me. I know when he gets going, he's tough, but he stands there, and you could do a ton of damage to him before he does anything. Yeah, definitely not one of the toughest bosses in Elden Ring. I know he was supposed to be a mage, kind of a tough caster, but having that monologue makes it so easy to beat him. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Misere Corday. It doesn't matter, by the way, what dagger you have. Carrying Grand Georgia scales with intelligence. Any staff, any seal for Terra Magic and buffs. Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Tier, Fate Tier, and the Spellblade set will boost this by 8%. Yeah, Carrion Grandeur is something that scales with intelligence regardless of the weapon that you're using. It pulls directly from whatever your intelligence stat is. And we have our mage stats, so 50 Vigor, 22 Mind, 18 Endurance, 20 Strength for the Jellyfish Shield, 70 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith tier. Night Comet was just there, but we're using Golden Vow, Hala Shabiri, and Terra Magica to buff Carrion Grandeur. Next one up here is going to be a personal favorite for a lot of people on here because the Bolt of Grand Sax is a very popular weapon, and guess what? Of course it's chargeable too, does good lightning damage, and has absurd range. Yeah, the Bolt of Grand Sax is an absolute blast to use. If you've never picked up this weapon in the capital, be sure to do so. By the way, when you get to the end game, you actually can't go back and grab the Bolt, so make sure that your first trip to the capital, you grab this weapon. Yeah, it's one of a select few items that vanishes once it turns to ash in capital, so make sure that you grab this in the capital, otherwise you're going to have to wait all the way till New Game Plus or have somebody drop the bolt for you. By the way, don't you love New Game Plus 7? I was literally doing around 2500 damage on average, and even this random side boss in the Rot Lake in Commander O'Neill, it doesn't seem to do much damage to him because everything has so much HP. Yeah, New Game Plus 7, the HP is just ridiculous. The amount of scaling they get in terms of HP and the damage they do. I do like the challenge, though, at rune level 150, and it is fun. Let's jump into equipment for this one. After we show off the Ash of War one more time, apparently. It's so cool, though, it is. We have the Bolt of Grand Sacks, plus 10 preferably. Any seal for buffs, we hit 51 poise. Godfrey Icon, of course. Lightning Scorpion Charm. Ritual Swords Talisman. Shard of Alexander. Lightning Tier. Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. For stats, it's a dexterity weapon, so we have 60 dexterity, 33 faith with the faith tier, so we can generically buff it with Hala Shabiri, and then we're using Golden Vow too, and of course we have 60 vigor. By the way, you could two-hand this weapon with, I believe, like 15 dex or so, it doesn't take too much. You get the 1.5 times strength bonus when two-handing, don't forget about that when you're factoring stats. This next clip is honestly great, and this is number 4, Burno Flame. This clip just uh, ended up being comical in a way. We ended up using Burno Flame. Of course we get the butt slam, but when he lands back down, it's still going on, and goodbye tree avatar. Fire absolutely destroys them, by the way. It's great to use fire against them, and Burno Flame could take out the majority of them in just one or two casts. Let's jump into equipment for this one. 
For equipment, we have the giant seal and the jellyfish shield. We hit 55 poise, so we got plenty of armor there and poise. Godfrey icon, fire scorpion charm, ritual sword talisman, flux canvas talisman, fire tier, fate tier. Let's jump into stats for this build. In for stats, we have 60 vigor, 22 mind, 24 endurance, 20 strength for the jellyfish shield. We hit 80 faith using the faith tier. And of course, we're using Golden Vow. Hall of Shabiri is going to be 5% more than Flame Grant Me Strength because it's pure fire damage. And of course, charging up Burnal Flame. And next up here at number 3, we have Marius Executioner's Sword. I ended up using Blood Boil for this one, but just two buffs and the sword, it does a ton of damage and can build up on successive hits. Yeah, this is a powerful strength and arcane weapon. It truly is incredible how much successive attack damage you can get with this one. It can one-shot bosses if you buff it like crazy. In this case, we just went for two buffs and I think around 60 vigor. Let's jump into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have Marius Executioner Sword plus 10. Any seal for buffs. We hit 51 poise. Godfrey Icon, of course. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. Melissa's Prosthesis or Ritual Swords Talisman. Shard of Alexander. Thorny Tier. Faith Tier. We're also using Blood Boil for this one. Blood Boil is a body buff, so we'll replace either Flame Grant Me Strength or Halisha Brewery. If I had the stats, I would just run Halisha Brewery because I don't really like using consumables, and it would just be 5% less. 40 Strength, 45 Arcane, 60 Vigor, Golden Val, and Blood Boil. And at number 2, we have an absolute staple for From Software Games, and that's the Dark Moon Greatsword. This weapon, believe it or not, is also chargeable as well, doing massive damage when you are able to charge its weapon art. Dark Moon Greatsword is the definition of overpowered for most builds because you could just pump up your intelligence and it's going to pull directly from your intelligence stat. It's chargeable, it's relatively reasonably quick, does frost damage, and it's incredibly FB friendly. Now, I ended up losing in this fight, I think, two times. I think I beat him on the third time, and that was because of the ability to charge it. Now, for the regular beams, they actually come out relatively quick, and I'm used to doing that. As far as charging it, of course, it takes more time, and it was a little bit difficult for this fight, but you get a lot more damage out of it, too. Yeah, this was not the best boss to charge this on. There's so many other bosses in the game where you're easily able to charge it consistently, but charging it here was a little bit of an issue because, first of all, I gotta get close to him, and second of all, he attacks relatively fast. All that said, it's one of the most user-friendly weapons in the entire game. Just like the Blasphemous Blade, it's very straightforward. The Blasphemous Blade's ash will scale directly with Faith. In this case, it's all intelligence, and it's so easy to use, just as easy to use as the Blasphemous Blade. If you're new to my channel and you're new to Elden Ring, definitely do Ronnie's quest line in Elden Ring because it leads you to the Dark Moon Greatsword and it's also one of the best quest lines in the entire game. Make sure to get that one done, especially before DLC. Definitely no doubt one you're going to want to do. I believe there's an achievement for that ending too and that ending will get you the Dark Moon Greatsword. Two weapons I recommend having and I've already said it here, you probably already know what I'm going to say, is the Dark Moon Greatsword and Blasphemous Blade. However, fire may not be as good based on the DLC trailer. For equipment, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword, preferably plus 10. Any seal for buffs, any staff for Terra Magica. Spellblade set will boost this. Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander. Then we have the Magic Tier, Fate Tier. Let's jump into stats for this one. And for stats for this one, we have 50 Vigor as well for most of the mage stuff. 22 Mine, 18 Endurance. Just going through this for the people that use these time stamped. And 70 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith tier, so we could use Golden Vow, Halish Shabiri, and Terra Magica to buff the power of the Dark Moon Greatsword. And lastly, number one on this list is no surprise to anybody, and that is Night Comet. Chargeable, incredibly powerful, and one of the easiest spells to use in the game. So many people have told me that when they use Night Comet, they actually get bored because it's that good. It causes absolute destruction. I do end up getting hit here, but three to 5,000 damage per charge cast, depending on the boss, with just two buffs most of the time in Terra Magica, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. And the range on Night Comet is absurd, too. You can hit enemies from really far away. Let's jump into equipment for this awesome build. For equipment, we have one Staff of Loss and the Jellyfish Shield, or two Staffs of Loss, which would be 10% more, but if you can only get one, you can use the Jellyfish Shield, any seal for buffs, random set of armor on, Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Graven Mass Talisman, Magic Tier, Faith Tier, let's jump into stats. And for stats on this one, we have 50 Vigor, 22 Mind, 18 Endurance, same for the Mage stuff for the most part, 70 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith Tier, we're using Golden Vow, Halishaburi, and Terra Magica to buff Night Comet, and I must say, if you have not used Night Comet yet and you're ever struggling, definitely try out Night Comet. It's an incredible spell. 
Thanks for watching this one. If you stayed throughout the entire video, I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody who watches all of my videos. I can't believe we hit 25,000 subs. I'm sure we're going to hit 30,000 sometime in the future. I cannot wait for that. This channel has been incredible and this community has been fantastic. Whether you're a regular viewer or somebody who catches a video here and there, I really truly appreciate everybody. 25,000 subs is incredible. I will catch everybody soon. Be sure to sub and the Discord is linked below.